So, we have a very special guest tonight, and they're from the Bay Area. And what you're about ready to hear tonight is something that you probably never heard before. But I bet you, somebody in here needs to hear it. And they're going to get up and dance, too. All right? So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Divine Kingdom. Water. And after he gets baptized in the water, 
he goes into the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by the devil. And he defeats the devil by speaking the word of God. In every response, he says, it is written. And after he goes through the wilderness, he goes on top of a mountain, and he gives the law of God. All right, guys, I'm going to ask you guys to sing this. Yeah! Give it up! Yeah. Give it up! Yeah. Give it up! When you're in the fun, open song of God. Sing, when you're in the fun, open song of God. All right. I need a bold volunteer from City Team to read this passage for me. Who's bold? Come on. Come on, we need a City Team guy. Come on, right at? here. Right here. here. Here's the mic, sir. What's your name? Steve. Let's give it up for Steve. Steve! Yeah. 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 Text one, two. Philippines, Philippines 3, Philippians, Philippians, yeah. Philippians uh, chapter 3, verse 8 and 10. More than that, I count all these things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowledge, knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and account them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own delivering from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness is, the righteousness which comes from God on basis of basis of faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, being comforted to his death. Amen. 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 Let's give it up for Brother Stephen. Stephen. All right. Yeah. I got something in my hand. What does this look like? Anybody? From the ground? A shirt. No, it's not a shirt. It's a rainbow poop. It's, it's rainbow poop. poop. It's a poop. It's rainbow poop. Why would I have rainbow poop in my hand? Hmm. I don't know why. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Come on, man. All right. So the reason why I brought this rainbow yes. poop yes. is to show you this is what the devil does. He takes sin. He takes sex, drugs, alcohol, and he makes poop look colorful. And he goes, ooh, you want some poop? Why don't you take a scoop? You know what I'm talking about? He goes, ooh, why don't you just take a little taste of this rainbow poop? And Paul in Philippians says he counts all things as loss. He says it's rubbish. And rubbish, it's translated in the Greek to be what? Poop. Poop. So Paul considers everything to be poop compared to knowing Jesus Christ. So we came here to warn you to not be fooled by the devil's schemes. Get this poop Amen. out of here. Amen. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do. All right. That's all Thank you. <laughs> all right. Everybody stand up. Come on. Everybody stand up. This is a participation. Right? Let's go. So I'm going to teach you this song. So we could remember this message because our desire for you is to be baptized in the water. And we want you to go to battle with the devil through the wilderness. And we want you to take that journey and get to that mountain. So let's sing together. Water, wash over me. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. 
Let's go, guys. All right, you guys can sit down and chill. We're going to sing some more songs for you guys. Are you guys ready to sing along with us? All right, this is a simple song. If you guys can put your hands together, it's Lord, I'm found in you because we were lost, but we were found in him. And it goes like this. Y'all ready? Woo, ready. Yeah, we're already Just like the word of God says that we need to pray for our enemies. 
And let's pray for our enemies, those that hurt us, and ask God to give you a divine healing and forgiveness for them. And that's what this song is about. It's called Forgiven Rhythm. And this is the chorus. And in between the choruses, we'll be, we'll be rapping for you guys. And our raps are a form of prayer where you can listen. But during the time of the chorus, join in and sing with us. And let's sing this song of healing. All right, let's do this.
Honestly, that's why you know my mentor right here always encouraged me to record it. But this song is my prayer, and um, it's for all people who are lost in this world, all people who are who are hurting, and um, I believe that God can heal. Amen. 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 This song's called "Weary Children." I see a man. Face with a box in hand, his night still untold. A plain stare that kept hope. I see a girl with wounds that are hard to fade. Innocent snatched away, fighting your tears day by day. Oh, weary children, keep holding your hands. Someday we'll make it to another world.
I'm actually an employee of the state team organization. I work in Oakland, and just recently I started working here in San Jose. So I'm hopefully get to know some of you guys. Um, I'm looking, looking forward to spending some time with you guys. Um, and so, you know, I'm not just an employee of City Team, though. I'm also a graduate of the men's program in Oakland. And that's more important for me, is that I'm a graduate of the program. Um, and of course, you know, God has given me a brand new life. Um, vastly different than the one that I knew before. I didn't come here to this place and like have them fix my life, but I was given a brand new life by God, right? That's right. Wow. Um, and, job. you know, I actually shouldn't even have been let into the program. Um, so, you know, uh, out in Oakland, you know, I showed up there one morning um, with nothing but the clothes I was wearing. Um, you know, underweight. I had been severely addicted to heroin and meth. Um, yeah, whoops. Yeah. That was a mistake. That's a whoops. Yeah. Oh, that's a big whoops. That's a really big whoops. Yeah. I tripped and fell on a needle. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, oh no. So yeah, that's bad. You don't want to do that. Um, and so, so you know, I came there this morning, and there was this morning where, you know, uh, I had, you know, I had been struggling for a while, but there was this one morning in particular where uh, I was given this incredible gift. And I wish that I could like bottle up this gift and hand it to anybody who needs it, because really we all need it. But that gift is desperation. Yeah. I became extremely Amen. desperate Amen. to have any life but the one that I had known. Right. So I became desperate enough that I was willing to ask for help. Yeah. And so I wound up showing up to this place, City Team in Oakland. And, uh, and so I showed up there and you know, uh, I was withdrawing really bad and so they sent me to detox. And so I went to Cherry Hill Detox in San Leandro, and, uh, and you know, you're supposed to go, and you go for a week, and then, you know, you come back, and you can pass the test, and then you can enter the program. And, and so I came back, and uh, before I came back, though, I decided it would be a great idea to get one last bag. Uh, and so I showed up to City Team in downtown Oakland, and uh, I don't know if anyone's ever been there, but it's, a, it's, a big, it's in downtown Oakland. Okay. It's right on Washington Street between 7th and 8th. Right across the street from the police station. Yeah. So I tell her, guys, if you want to leave, that's where you're going. No. <laughs> uh, but so I, I showed up there, and uh, on the bottom floor, there's our dining hall, kind of like the one that you guys have in here, except a little smaller. And then we have a, a shelter. Um, and, and so before you come up into the program, you stay downstairs in the shelter. And so I was down there, and that was the last place that I put a needle in my arm. Good job, good job. Yeah. But so the next morning, I came upstairs, and they gave me the drug test. I failed. I was supposed to pass the test in order to get in the program, but I just used the night before. And so the program manager, a big guy named Mark Koo, um, he's also a graduate of the program. Uh, you know, I started to, to kind of beg. I was like, man, like, I, I kind of lied. I was like, you know, oh, I was just doing so much. Like, it's still in my system, all this type of stuff. But, but I knew that I needed to be there. And yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. he sent me out, and uh, he called in some of the other staff members, and and they talked for a little bit, and then they called me back, and they said, we're going to give you a chance. You need to be clean by next week. You can't pass by next week, and you're going to have to go. And so so, uh, so he let me in. He gave me a chance. And by the grace of God now, I've been sober since November 17 of 2015. Um, I, I was having dinner with Mark, our program manager, uh, a couple of months ago. And I reminded him, I said, you remember when I came to the program and I failed the test and you let me in anyways? He said, well, yeah, I knew that if I didn't let you in, you were going to die. He said, I knew that if I sent you out, that you weren't going to come back. And I can't help but feel like that's exactly what the gospel is for us. Because we fail the test. Yeah. We fail the test to get into heaven. Yeah. That's, right. that's what... Our desire is, right, is to live eternally in the presence of God. But because of our sin, because of our rebellion, because of our disobedience, what we deserve is to be eternally separated from God. Because that can't be in his presence because he's, he's too utterly holy and good. That sin can't be in his presence. Yeah. And so for us, what we deserve is to be eternally separated. But he doesn't want for us to die. He doesn't want for us to experience that. So he lets us in, but not based on our test results, but based on whose? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
Because that's the one who lived the life that we couldn't live. That's the one who lived the perfect life, who was sinless. So that we can take on his righteousness as our own and be able to enjoy eternity in heaven with God if we put our faith in Jesus because that's our only hope. Because if we try to do it on our own, if we try to you know, achieve right standing with God based on our own actions, we're going to fail. We already have. And because God is a just God, his justice has to be realized. But that justice was realized on the cross, right? That's where God's justice was made known, was made perfect. Because not only did God need to have his justice satisfied, but he also provided the means for that justice to be satisfied. Amen. And so in him and in faith in Christ, we have forgiveness of our sins. But not only that, he says he's going to give us a new life. Amen. Amen. That's right. In John chapter 11, we learn the story of Lazarus. You guys heard the story? Yeah. Yeah. Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus, and uh, he became really sick, right? Came really sick, and uh, he had two sisters, Mary and Martha, and, and they went to find Jesus. They went to go tell him that he was sick so that he could come and heal him, right? Because they knew. They knew that Jesus could heal him, so they went to go find him. And they found him. They had to go travel to go, to go get to him. And when they found him, they said, our, our brother Lazarus is sick. We need you to come right away. And he said something really profound. He said, this sickness will not end in death, but it is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. This sickness will not end in death. He knew that by the time he got there that he was going to be dead. He allowed for that to happen. He had a purpose for it. He had a purpose for that suffering and for this situation. I have a stepsister. Uh, she's also someone who has struggled with addiction. And, and uh, a couple years ago, you know, I, I decided I was going to try to reach out to her. And, uh, and so I started to go and see her. She was staying out in Antioch. Um, living in Section 8 housing apartments, doing things for drugs that no girl should be doing. Um, and so, you know, I started trying to reach out to her, but she was so lost and she just didn't, didn't want to hear the message. She didn't want to change. And so, which I kind of lost contact with her. And, and uh, in last year on Father's Day, um, so I had gotten a call from her. She was staying with this guy in their car. And her boyfriend needed to get into a program because he was court ordered, and so he wanted to come to the city team. And so I said, one day's a day, and you know, if I can pick you up, anything I can do to get you there, let me know. They came and went, he never showed up. I called, he didn't answer. One week later on Father's Day, they got into a horrible car accident. They were driving on the freeway. We believe he fell asleep while he was driving. They veered off the road and flipped. Neither of them were wearing seatbelts. He passed away in the accident, so he missed his chance. My stepsister was thrown from the vehicle, landed on her head. Uh, after the accident, we weren't sure if there was going to be any brain activity left at all. <coughs> she was in a vegetative state. They had to remove a piece of her skull uh, so that her brain could swell. Otherwise, the pressure would have killed her. Um, but to us in that moment, it seemed like all hope was lost. It seemed like she was dead. We had lost her. And so a few months later, uh, God had made this miracle happen in her life. After a few days, she started to move her fingers. After a few more days, she was moving her head back and forth to answer questions. Uh, after a few weeks, um, she was able to uh, talk. And, and after a few months, she was able to start walking again. And, and she made almost a full recovery except for some, some minor issues with her memory. And, and we thought this was just the most amazing thing. They got pulled her out of this, but then she had to go back in and do the surgery to put this piece of skull back in her head. They pumped her full of opiates, and it triggered her addiction again, and she went back out. So she uh, moved in with this guy and was, you know, doing all this stuff, and, and eventually, because she developed this really bad blood infection, they had to take the bone back out, and then they were going to have to put in this plastic piece as a replacement, and so eventually... Um, she had to find a new doctor who's going to do the surgery for her, and the, and the doctor said, I'm only going to do the surgery if you go to a program for three months before the surgery and three months after the surgery. So she agreed. She ended up going out to a program in Santa Rosa, and um, at this point, I decided that I needed to take my hands out of the situation because I had been trying to insert my will into her life and to control her, and it was only causing me stress, and it wasn't doing any good for her, right? And so I had to step back. Because I was, I was trying to control the situation. I wasn't doing a good job. And so I stepped back. I let her go to that program. I, I, you know, I was listening from, you know, from a distance. I knew that she was there. Um, and she calls me a few weeks ago. 
and she says, hey, I've been here for a few months. Will you come and speak at our AA meeting here? I said, I would love to. I would love to come out there. So I got to go out there a few days later. She was the secretary. I got to sit there and share my story while, while my sister is sitting here, and she's a totally different person now. A totally different person. Not the person I had known before. A few days later, she went back in to do the surgery. Afterwards, the surgery went perfectly. I went to visit her in the hospital afterwards, and uh, they asked her if she wanted medication for her pain. She said, no, I don't want any of it. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing, right? And she was sitting there and she was talking to me and she said, I'm glad this accident happened. I'm glad that it happened because it's what I needed. It's what I needed in order to surrender. It's what I needed to wake up, to realize what it was doing. She said that she had no intention of ever changing, that she was perfectly content with dying the way that she was living. But God changed her heart. And so she said she was glad for it. And Jesus says, I'm glad. After he finds out that Lazarus is dead, he travels over there. He finds that Lazarus is dead. He's already been put in the tomb. The stone has been rolled in front of it. And he said, I'm glad that I wasn't here because now you might believe. He goes there and, and he's already in the tomb. And he finds that his sisters and his family are all there. And they're all weeping. They're all mourning for their brother who's died. And what does Jesus do? He weeps with them. He weeps with them. He says that he was deeply moved and that he wept with them. That's the God that we have. Amen. In Hebrews Amen. chapter 1, it says that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, the exact imprint of his nature. So when we look to Jesus, we see God's character. That we have a God who created everything, Amen. the heavens and the earth, Amen. and everything in it, called the stars out by name. Yet he was going to come down in the form of a man, but not a man wearing fancy clothing and sitting in a palace, eating all the nicest food. But he came as a servant. He came as someone who was considered lowly, who didn't even have a home. And he came and he, he experienced the, the mourning of this family and he was moved by it. He's willing to sit with us in our sadness, in our struggle, Amen. and weep with us. He was there in that hospital with my sister when me and my family were weeping, thinking that my sister was dead. Amen. 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 And so it says that he was deeply moved and he came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there was a bad odor for he's been there for four days. I don't know about you, but when I showed the city team, I didn't smell too good. <laughs> then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and he called Lazarus out of the tomb. And all these people were standing around there. There were friends, family, complete strangers, and he said, unbind him and let him go. Unbind him and let him go, because he had already been wrapped up in the burial garments and put in the tomb, and the stone was rolled away. When they took the stone away and he called him out, they unwrapped these burial garments to reveal a living man. I don't know about you, but that's, that's what happened for me when I showed up to this place. Amen. I was wrapped up in all that death. I was wrapped up in all of it. And these people came around me, people who I never met before. And they started to unwrap these layers of shame and guilt and all these things that have been keeping me bound up in that. Bound up in my sin. And so he says, unbind him and let him go to reveal a free man. And so I just imagine, you know, that we have this story, and this is the last miracle that Jesus performed before he went to the cross. So what did he show us? Not only was he able to be raised from the dead by the Spirit, but he also showed before he went there, this is what I can do for you. Amen. This is what I can do for you. Your story does not have to end in death. Amen. Your story does not have to end in death. But he can give us new life. And not only is that a future expectation that we have, that when he returns, or when we die, that he's going to come back to remake the heavens and the earth, and he's going to give us new bodies 
that are no longer subject to sickness or decay because there will be no more sin, that's a very real future expectation that we have, that if we have put our faith in him, that we are going to be able to enjoy his presence for all of eternity. But not only that, that's a very real present reality. It is a present reality that he can give us new life now, that as soon as we accept him, that he's already making us new from the inside, Amen. from the inside out. Yeah. Amen? Amen. That's the gift that he offers us. The gift that he offers us is a new life. That's what I've been given. And for anybody who's here who hasn't yet made that decision, I want you to consider that. What that new life might be like for you. Great. It would be great, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It'd be great. Come on. It'd be great. Yeah. I'm going to perform right. some songs real quick. I'm going to perform some songs real quick. I hope you all enjoy them. Let me pray first. The moment that they would seek you, they would open their hearts to you and soften them, Lord. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Y'all ready? Amen. Let's go. Come, Come on. on. Let's stand up, y'all. Come to the front. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like I got these diamonds in my mouth. Life, my life, I lost. 
a new day. Yeah! yeah. Let's go. This is the happy song. Y'all still with us? Let's go, everybody. Come on. We got yeah. Steve in the house. Yeah. Let's go, Steve. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Woo. Come on, y'all. Yeah.
one more to share with you guys. Close this out. I want to share something that I wrote this song, this next piece. I wrote this. The first half I wrote while I was still in my addiction. And the second half I wrote after I was saved. And so the first half is all about what it was like for me. And then finally it gets to a place of surrender. It goes like this. Academy should flatter me with extravagant awards. For my acting, no elaborate cameras record. No laughter or applause. After my performances, just slam doors at the family counseling conferences. All of these medical offices should nominate me for Congress when I'm naturally master for the conjuring false promises. Must have been how I caught in the baddest touch of porn that just look like hard and cold and in caches. My shadow is shroud of smoldering ashes. Asking for a glass of gasoline to wash down lit matches. I can't get off the mattress. The black controls my actions, but the fact is, I'd rather sleep at home than in my classes. See, honestly, narcotics ain't anonymous to me. I'm close yeah. to my supplier like my mama wanna be, like my father rather be hardly ever bothered to speak. But he taught me talk is cheap. I teach my loved ones what they lost is what it cost to talk to me. But I can stop anytime I want to. Famous last words that'll come back to haunt you. I can stop anytime I want to. Hanging off the last branch I got to hold on to. I can stop anytime I want to. But I just don't want to. No, I just don't want to. No, I just don't want to stop. It's an intravenous time trap. You'll find yourself looking back at your life like time capsules. I'm history, the last forgotten mystery. Fist blistering, Mr. Frivolous Fitz. Gotta hit something, get something straight. I'm corrosive as bleach. I need a hit to get up. I need a hit to go to sleep. I get a hit or give up. I get a hit that goes a week of me spun. Round and round, every day's a rerun. Speaking on my demons, but I'm never late to feed them. Watching as they eat them. Pieces of my peace of mind, feasting on a decent kind. My piece of history defined by seeking for the least divine. But I can stop anytime I want to. Famous last words that'll come back to haunt you. I can stop anytime I want to. Hanging off the last branch I got to hold on to. I can stop anytime I want to. But I just don't want to. No, I just don't want to. No, I just don't want to. Stop. Caught black handed and blacklisted. Didn't witness my past. You should be glad that you missed it. I could get twisted and flash. Fill my fist with your cash. Spend an hour in the bathroom trying to hit and then dash. If the last shall be first, I'm ahead of the game. What's left of my life goes right in my vein. It's strange how painkillers don't lessen the pain of stress that has kept infesting my brain. Trust me. You should not trust me. Got a lie in my pocket. It ain't dusty. Trust me. You should not trust me. Come between my drugs and me and it's gonna get ugly. Yeah. So trust me. You should not trust me. It ain't calm, it's in chaos that I'm comfy. So trust me. You should not trust me. My name is David, but most people call me Junkie. Cause I can't stop. Even though I want to. Famous last words coming back round to haunt me. I can't stop. Even though I want to, last branch broke in the bottom and I fall through. I can't stop, even though I want to. So it's gotta finally call to. So it's gotta finally fall to. Amen. Now I think I see a light. Thank you.
Live God's dream. Yeah.